Hello, everyone. Welcome back. And we are with Yufat, which is uh, with um, ga games making games. My apologies. <laughs> uh, please tell us a little bit more about that. Uh, so my name is Yufat. I'm an indie developer in Toronto. Um, uh, and I'm also co-director of Dames Making Games, which is um, a non-for-profit that um, sort of helps uh, women, non-binary, um, trans, or anyone else who doesn't fit with uh, sort of the typical game developer uh, to get into, not to get into game, but to make games. And so we have workshops and we have all those kinds of stuff in Toronto. Uh, I'm also a collective, members, a collective member of Different Game, which is a, sorry, a bit more academic organization that uh, creates, actually had a conference in New York uh, oh, the last few years about m different games and games that are a little bit different. So, Great. Um, um, so what made you decide to come to Gamer X East? Um, I know a lot of people here and was like, I applied. Uh, I actually didn't know if I could make it until like two weeks ago because <laughs> my, uh, I residency stuff in mm -hmm. Canada but um, yeah I applied I was like we'd be interested to get in and I got in so that was basically okay. the full yeah um, are you speaking on a panel or showcasing something I just finished my panel it was a uh, subversive games uh, okay. sort of uh, we were uh, me Alex Leach and JC Holder uh, and we were talking about like games that are subversive or games that are weird and different and sort of uh, work against like our society expectations of what games should be in the system yeah great uh could you give an example that you gave at the panel uh so i was talking like for example my game uh one of my game uh which was uh it's called real army simulator and it's a game about like it's a boring game about the army uh jc uh is uh i think he has a they have a panel here um which is about uh he, they made a game about um creating uh like growing up as a furry in the internet mm -hmm. uh so stuff like that like they're non-commercial games but they're sort of work again the expectation of games if i have to think about like in terms of games that are more known um anything by christine love uh uh Recently, uh, Mortician Tale just came out, a game about death and being a mortician. Um, I'm just naming all my friends, but mm -hmm. you know. No, that uh, works. <laughs> recently, like, uh, games that deal with, like, um, I don't remember the name. I think it's Thunderbird Strike. I might say it incorrectly, but uh, it's a game about the indigenous stru struggle against the pipeline. Uh, st mm -hmm. Games like that, they, they sort of don't, like, some of them are commercial, you know, came out of Steam, were success, but they're, they don't really follow what we think games are, or they go against, like, what games are. Like, Real Army Simulator will go against the idea of, like, the army being exciting and shooting and stuff like that, mm -hmm. uh, stuff like that, or, okay. or what we think about fairies or what we think about stuff like that. Right. So. Yeah. So uh, specifically, that would be more of the game story and plot, or can it be also game mechanics? It can be systems. Mm -hmm. uh, like I talk a lot about mods, and people who like use mods. For example, uh, my biggest joke is like make a game. We, we actually, it came out in the panel. That was mm -hmm. really funny. We were talking about Shadow of Mordor mm -hmm. and how, by all account, you're enslaving people to do your bidding. And then we were like, maybe you know, you make a mod, make your own Shadow of Mordor, but instead of like, you know, enslaving, you're teaching them how to build a community and like teaching them how to unionize and mm -hmm. uh, and so. During the panel, we had this whole like socialism, um, socialism of Mordor, or <laughs> union of Mordor, and now I kind of want to make this game. Yeah, but, but Definitely. like that, just the idea of like going against like like we are or, or people who play like World of Warcraft uh, as a pacifist, so they don't kill anything. And they, mm -hmm. th there was a few people like a guy who leveled up to I think like level seventy at that time by just like herbalism and yes. running around so those stuff like exists so so it can be narrative wise but it can definitely be mechanic wise okay great yeah. 
Uh, what got you into being in this section of the games industry? Uh, so I'm, uh, it's a long story. Great. I'll, I'll do the full, uh, <laughs> so I grew up in Jerusalem, mm -hmm. uh, and I was like, you know, a nice lefty growing up in a place where, you know, being somewhat more progressive is really rough. Um, and I went for a while I was an activist. I wasn't a particularly good activist or did it for a really long time, but I uh, sort of was uh, was influenced by subversive action done by activism, uh, by activists in order to sort of fight the system that they're fighting and, uh, and how much it worked and didn't work. Um, if I can give an example, there was like one time they, uh, there was a demonstration in the West Bank and they all came to us as like, the people from Avatar, like the James Cameron Avatar, mm -hmm. uh, and that got into like the New York Times and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So they got like, uh, in, like you know, they got publicity, right? And, mm -hmm. and so people now know about this demonstration. Mm -hmm. uh, so I got into interest, interested in that, and then I moved to Canada in like totally different experience. I live in Toronto, and it's like very different and. I sort of got into academia, though I'm, you know, I mean this like I need to live, but uh, like all academics at one point. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I teach game design in university, and I was like, uh, just wanted to make games, and somehow it became kind of a natural thing to make games that are just kind of weird and. Uh, I mean, and we talked about it in the panel, uh, like in many respect, Canada, we're kind of lucky because we have funding. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can have money to make your weird subversive game. Like our friends are doing that. Yeah. Um, uh, they, you know, they got some funding for their games. Uh, another friend, Sagan, she's doing like a vector wave game and she got government funding for that. So the, it, sort of like it's a thing that can happen there so i was just sort of became a thing for me um making weird subversive games yeah great yeah that seems like a really wonderful way to take your past and what you're passionate about yeah. and apply it to the games industry thank you yeah. for sharing um is there any like one last piece of advice or plugging of a project that you'd like to let us know about um so first of all, uh, if you don't follow Dames Making Games, uh, we do. Uh, we are mostly in Toronto, but we are uh, we we do stuff all over, uh, and obviously like a lot of um, organizations in other cities. I, I think our existence in Toronto was very instrumental of making Toronto more inclusive. Mm -hmm. uh, Toronto game industry being more inclusive, and uh, I think. Um, we were talking, so you should follow us and see what we do. Uh, you should also can follow me on Twitter, it's just Ifat Shaikh, uh, Twitter. It's really easy to find me because I'm uh, really, I'm, I think I'm the only person with my name Great. on the planet. <laughs> uh, and also, if you follow me on Twitter, I'm currently working on a game in Excel spreadsheet. Oh, uh, wow. So you can see my weird, it's for uh, Proc Gem, so I'm just mm -hmm. making this weird little game right now. So. Uh, and occasionally I make really funny stories about Toronto, so oh, great. Uh, you should follow me on Twitter. Great, yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for taking a few minutes out of your weekend to explain uh, things about your company and your, your history and all of that. So we really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you.